Welcome back to the Fox Robbins Show. Uh, glad to have you back. Come on in and, and spend some time with us. Not a lot of time, just a little bit. Half hour. <laughs> to get uh, some uh, help, some encouragement, some cheerleading, uh, some direction, uh, yeah, answer some questions, all about small business. And uh, this is uh, this episode is part two of two parts regarding supervision, mm -hmm. uh, supervi supervisor, supervisory uh, training, supervisory execution, yep. uh, and so forth. In a uh, uh, this is this pertains to a company of any size, from a startup company yep. to you know Fortune 100. It doesn't matter. If you're a solopreneur and all of a sudden you hire your first employee, guess what? You're also their supervisor. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, again, Fox Robbins Business Show. I'm uh, co-host Bill Fox. But the other co-host is someone you really need to pay attention to because he is, he is known out on the street as phosphorescent. And he is potent. And he is proficient. And he is Coach Robbins. Mr. Bill, oh, yeah. <laughs> Coach, I'm potent, all right. <laughs> this is a part, a part two of two parts. Yes, it and is. we already started talking about the uh, uh, supervisor supervisory task, yep. um, and uh, we're going to jump into. Well, we finished up the last show with planning. Went over planning. Issues. We went over now planning. Now we're going to move on because um, I was looking at because uh, the supervisory task uh, can be planning. Organizing. organizing, leading, controlling, and we're going to add, you know, on staffing. We add in staffing, yes. Staffing, right. So um, we were we talked about planning, yep. but let's jump on to the next one, Coach, which is uh, called organizing. Yep. And we need for you to explain this a little bit. I mean, everybody says, oh, I know what that is, and don't. <laughs> they might know what it is. Are they capable? Do they understand how to do it? I mean, the bottom line there is you're going to be – you know, taking the what you have, people, technology, equipment, and then you're going to be utilizing or allocating those resources and assigning certain work to make sure that you achieve the goals of your company or your division of that company. Mm -hmm. So you've got to sit down and say, here's how things, here's how we're going to do things around here. That was the best definition of culture I ever heard the way we do things around here and basically what you are and if you're the CEO you set the culture of the company if you're the entrepreneur who starts the company and you're going to organize the company this way this is how people my people are going to work together this is what we're trying to accomplish <laughs> that really is one of the basic basic things about culture so uh, organizing is to uh, allocate resource absolutely uh, assigning work yep and you could be a supervisor who says, stand out of the way, I'll, I'll do this. That's oh, not supervising. A micromanager? No, that's not super. That's bad management. And of course, as I've said many, many times, the number one reason good employees leave a company, a bad manager. Number one, by far, uh, people will leave a company more than trying to get more money, more than changing careers, more than anything, people will quit your company because their manager is just not a good manager of people. Well, everybody will say, oh, it's the money, but it's, it's not. not. It's not. It's not. Money is on the list, but it's not the top. Exactly. Item money is important enough, but it's not. It's also a zero sum game. Like that's beyond the scope of this show. Uh, but right. yeah, money is part of the equation, but it's way down the list. The, the, the person you're working for is critically important. Got a bad manager. You're going to get out of there. And then when you get a lot of people leaving the company, customer service suffers, and then customers start to will go away. And guess what? Your sales start to drop, and you're sitting there saying, why is my company going in the wrong direction? Because you've got somebody in who's a bad manager. That's why. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, I'm, still, I'm still sticking with you on organizing. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is that? Uh, well, that is scheduling, scheduling assigning, projects, uh, setting and, up and leading. So talk to us about that. Well, it's, a, it's a, like I say, scheduling projects. It's assigning duties. Uh, Bill, you need to do this, no. you know, weekly. Uh, Jan, you need to make sure that you've got this because Bill's going to need that every, on the second day every week that you're working in kind of a perk chart type organization, if you know what that is, to be able to say, here are the projects that need to be done. Here's who's got to do it. And here's, uh, here's, here's, time here's the time limit that is required, and here's, here's and how can, we're going to achieve the goals 
that we plan for, uh, this is how we do it. Right. And um, let's move on from, that's organizing. Let's move on to uh, uh, a favorite of yours is staffing. Hiring the people. What's a staffing? What, uh, staffing is what? Hi, it's identifying, hiring, and training or developing quality employees who love what they do, are engaged, are committed, are motivated, and that's part of the staffing problem to make sure you get the right people in the right places and get the wrong people out of the, <laughs> out of the company, quite mm -hmm. frankly. That's a mm -hmm. hard thing to do, but it's got to be done. Your performance depends on the quality of the results of the people that you hire and motivate and manage and assign the task to. Your results are going to be tied to what they accomplish. Right. Okay. And you've, got the, you've done your staffing, but now you, you move on to the next uh, supervisory task, which is leading. <laughs> Leadership, absolutely. You leader. got the people, yep. now you got to lead. Now you've got to be a leader. And boy, being a leader, there's been a ton of research, and I know I've, for 20 years, really been doing a lot of reading and a lot of studying about leadership as a function. And the best way I can describe the difference between management and leadership is management is all about doing things right, okay? Making sure things are done right. Leadership is all about making sure you're doing the right things. Okay, there's a subtle difference between the two. Columbus may not have been a great sailor, but he was the leader of the ship. He may be not pulling the rigging and, you know, setting the anchor and the sail and everything else, but he was leading people, of course, he missed anyway, but that's another story. Well, he okay. hit something. Yeah, he hit an island somewhere. He thought he was in <laughs> India. But anyway, that's the difference between management and leadership. Leadership is a critical issue, and people think, oh, leaders are born wrong. Leaders are made through training, through effort, Certainly some people are natural born leaders, there's no question about that. And then there's all different methods of leadership. You also have to be yourself, but you do have to understand how to motivate and lead people so that you can accomplish what the company or the division is trying to accomplish. And so you've got, <coughs> the, you've got the people, you're leading them, but you also have to control. So controlling, controlling is a supervisory skill. I would say it's probably one of the more important supervisory skills because you've got to monitor the performance. You know, you, you plan something, you know, you organize the people, you hired the right people, you're leading them, everybody's getting it done, and then occasionally, usually monthly or quarterly, you got to see, is it happening the way you planned it was going to happen? You can't just close your eyes and get to the end of the year and find out, oh my God, what happened? We missed. No, someplace in there you should be doing a control function which uh, basically says planning comes first, followed by organizing, staffing, leading, and then finally right. the control function which says, hey, we're on target, this is great. Well, maybe you don't need to dial the controls too much. Right. But if you find that something's amiss and we're not getting done what we need to get done, then you've got to do something different. This is what is mean by control. Control maybe is a strong word to use, but you've got to make an adjustment here. You know, you've got to change the sale. Right. You've got to do something different because like Einstein said, if you do the same thing you've been doing and expect a different result, you're crazy. <laughs> so you've got to do something different and that's the control function, I guess. But there is, you, you <coughs> mentioned, you've made a really important point. Is there a uh, relationship between uh, the, all of the, the planning uh, the planning, the organizing, the staffing, the leads, what you said, and then the controlling. And that is the continuum. You and said that there's an order of events here. Exactly. One, two, three, four, five. They're not just bullets. They're one, two, three, four, five. You've got to plan things out. You've got to organize how you're going to get it done. You've got to hire the right people, motivate the right people, lead the right people. And then you've got to monitor it or control to say, hey, everything is going good. And when things aren't going the way you want them to go, you have to go to back to planning and say, well, what do I have to change in the plan? Is it the people? Is it right. the process? Right. You know, uh, the TV show, The Profit, people, process, you know, no. and product, of course, he adds that. But people and process are critical, and that's what management's all about. Have you got the right people? Have you got the right process? <clears throat> you, uh, if you're a, uh, a supervisor, your responsibilities could be there are... Uh, there's certain, there's certain things that you need to be 
really astute about which is rec recognizing talent, sharing vision, uh, treating employees with, with dignity and respect, conducting, uh, conduct a meeting, ensure accomplishment, and keep everybody informed. Wow. Yes, exactly what you've got to do. Uh, I forgot to set the timer. Okay. And uh, the uh, uh, further, there's further responsibilities that are, that are key to supervision, which is be accessible, don't hide in the... Uh, Open door policy. Okay. I'm, I, I'm serious. I mean, I have an open door. I'm going to close it if you come in and want to talk privately. But I want any one of my people to be able to come to me, especially right. as a supervisor. Those are direct reports. Now, maybe I don't want the guy working in the warehouse on my uh, Cape Cod store, you know, coming to Boston and, you know, ringing my doorbell and telling me there's something wrong with, uh, you know, the, the, the receiving department. <laughs> but certainly the people that report directly to me, I, w I have an open door policy, come to me anytime. And mm. supervisory management means that you and all of the functional people who are working for you, you got to have an open, you want to be able to talk to them. And they, want, they can't have fear of talking to you too. That, that accessibility, uh, you, uh, you evaluate, you have to do periodic evaluation. Yes. Periodic. It should yes. be a part of your schedule. Unfortunately, you know, we've heard that people do these annual reviews. 95% of the time it's a joke. Yeah. There's, there's nothing really done very professionally about the review system. <laughs> it already sounded good. It sounds good, and I'll give you all fives, but I, you know, I want to give you fives on everything. I'll give you four on something here, and then I'll get the form into headquarters and everything. Reviews can be a wonderful document mm. to help people realize what they do well and be proud of it, what they could do better, and then work with that person as their supervisor to say, what do you need to get better? Need more training? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what is it that I can provide you to help you become a better uh, employee? Reviews should be used for that, but unfortunately, 90% of the time, they're they're an automatic thing. They're misused. And uh, we're still talking about the responsibility of supervisors. This is a big menu. You have to. Uh, you know, provide your provide your your owner, your uh, the person who started the business. Keep that uh, person informed uh, for planning purposes. You yep. know, to do better planning. Uh, your d uh, department performance. Uh, you give employees clear instructions. You make sure they understand their jobs, and you cooperate. Yep. It's a, big, it's a big menu here. It's a big menu, and that's why I say people need to be trained to be supervisors, managers at any level. They need training to just take that person and move them. You're now the manager of the department. Really? <laughs> I mean, like I said, it isn't fairy dust that gets it done. It's a lot of hard work uh, to train, motivate, manage the manager, the supervisory manager, and the person that puts them in that position. That's their job. That's the next level up. And uh, in this whole mix of, uh, of, uh, of duties of the supervisors, there's an accountability function in here that the people who uh, report to you have to be accountable for carrying out their job. Everybody's accountable. And you could be, uh, you, and you may have to, you may have to dole out uh, penalties. Yes, you do. Or you warnings. Right. But you also can, you also could be, re, you could reward Good accomplishment. One of the best ways to reward good accomplishment doesn't have to do anything with the money. Quite frankly, the, one of the things I see <coughs> seldom, seldom used mm -hmm. is a supervisor walking up to somebody and saying, Bill, thank you. You did one hell of a good job with that last week. I really appreciate the extra effort. That got us over the top. Nice job. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, come on, take you to lunch. <laughs> The, uh, in order to become a supervisor, you mm -hmm. have to uh, have a, uh, you need a superior grasp of the technical skills. Yep. You need uh, 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 a person with, with seniority, a person with good work habits and leadership skill, and also uh, 
a recent college graduate? You need a college degree to be a no, supervisor? No, you don't need a college degree, but uh, co recent college graduates, like the kids that I'm teaching, we're teaching over at Mass Maritime right now, they're going to probably leave school with an engineering degree and a minor in business, because that's what we teach in the uh -huh. business, the uh, marine business department, uh -huh. and they'll probably go right into a supervisory management position. Uh -huh. That's why they're taking, that's why I've got 70 students taking a supervisory management course because they know when they graduate, they're probably going to have a couple of uh, reports, you know, that, that uh -huh. they're responsible for. Uh -huh. And if not, right away, it's going to happen very quickly because they've got this wonderful dual degree, engineering and uh, business minor. The uh, someone <laughs> preparing to be a supervisor, yep. uh, Ken, uh, speaking of... of uh, uh, college, work at uh, college, you know, you could learn about management uh, by reading and by observation. Mm -hmm. You could learn as much as uh, possible uh, on a continuous learning process. Uh, and uh, you could acknowledge another person's feelings if they were also a candidate for the position. So there are, there are preparation, you know, for being a supervisor. There's a lot of, lot of preparation to learn how. And also, once you've learned how, doesn't mean you're going to be instantly the world's greatest manager of human beings. It's like anything else. Just because I give you a driver, a golf club driver, and say, hold it this way and swing it that way, you're not ready for the pro tour, okay? Mm -hmm. But at least you got the basic construction down. Now you can go ahead and practice and do these things and hopefully as you become a better and better supervisor, guess what happens? Your division's performing well, hopefully, mm -hmm. and then you move up even further in the company. By the way, uh, there's, a, there's some interesting notes in your, uh, in your PowerPoint. One is, uh, if, you, if you are becoming a supervisor or, or about to, you should insist that the, that the boss, your boss, make an official announcement of the promotion and tell Absolutely. people. Absolutely, especially if you were working with those people. If you were hired from the outside, it's just as important to say, mm -hmm. we have a new supervisor coming in from ABC company. Right. The boss who made the choice to hire you for the, as a supervisor, and that could be the entrepreneur, the leader of the company, has made a choice to hire somebody yeah. and put a few of the employees that are already there you know, uh, under his charge, right. or has picked somebody from the group to step up to do some certain do things that. so yeah. that the entrepreneur continue to do the more important management tasks and less of the technical tasks to grow the company to where the, the entrepreneur wants to grow the company. Right. And you could tell, you could state your expectations and desire to work as a team yeah. and so forth uh, uh, be. as you step into being a supervisor. Right. And do not rush to make changes. Don't. Don't be a uh, don't no, be don't, a hurricane. Don't be a change, change, change. Too some people, you know, the change of the day. That's too much, you know. Yeah. Change is difficult. Make for changes. People. You have to make changes, but you have to make them intelligently, and you got to bring them on correctly, timing wise and issues wise, and that's all part of the understanding of how to organize a uh, a, a division or a company. And finally. There are other other uh, uh, tips that you have for people becoming a supervisor, which is like set limits, setting a limit on your behavior. <laughs> Don't be a rescuer. Figure out how to measure success. Communicate. Be firm, and be a learner. Yeah. Is that is that uh, that's a that's a long list there. It is a long list, but those are just a, maybe a half a dozen things you you need to set some limits on your own behavior, other people's behavior. You're not you're not going to be running around putting out fires every every time something happens. I used to have a uh, manager say to me, gee, you know, we're, we got this problem here in this store. And I'd say, what's the problem? And he'd explain the problem to me. The next thing I want to hear from the manager is, what are, what are a couple of things you think need to be done to fix it? And which one do you think is the better one? I'll make the final decision, but I need some input from you uh, as you're the manager, maybe of a supervisor or a supervisor from an employee, mm -hmm. I got a problem with this machinery. What's going on? It's not doing this or that. Well, how are you going to fix? How do you think we need to fix it? Well, I need a new head, need new IT. Need... Okay, great. Let me see what I can do to help you get this done. Right. Right. Well, uh, we've been, this is a Fox Robbins business show, and we've been talking about supervision. Yep. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the skills, the background, the execution. And so forth. It's a big. It's a big task. Huge.
but it's critically important. Right. And all of our uh, Fox Robbins uh, shows, they're all uploaded to uh, YouTube for, uh, for everyone's convenience because then you can watch a show at your own, at your own time and your own pace. Right. Yep. So please feel free to go to YouTube. This is uh, part two of a two-part uh, series on supervision. Uh, go to YouTube up at the top in the uh, search box. Just type in a single word, Fox Robbins, F-O-X-R-O-B-B-I-N-S, Fox Robbins, and click, and voila, there's a library of uh, shows, and you can go uh, scroll through and, and pick a show that is of current interest. And uh, we go from there, and thank you for joining us on this segment, and we will see you next time.